So, where should we start? <sighs> well, the, the one thing is, you are a psychotherapist. That's right. And a good one, I shall say. <laughs> and um, one of the things that you've kind of enlightened me, a term you've enlightened me to, is not like the nonverbal parts of our consciousness. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a really interesting thing to me because I'm a very much a word person. I do a lot of writing. I, I put a lot of emphasis on being able to communicate well. Mm -hmm. So this idea of these parts of consciousness of which you cannot touch with words, mm -hmm. you can touch in other ways. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the, the ideas of like these formative experiences before we even had language is mm -hmm. still in our consciousness, mm -hmm. but it's in a way that is um, beyond our really rational mind. Because mm -hmm. the rational mind is kind of where the words live, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just, just what, what, what's your... How how do you what what's what's the ways to like get into nonverbal parts of consciousness? How do we how do we begin touching those in your in your thoughts and your sure. mind? Sure, sure, yeah. Well, one I I'm curious about. You know, when when does one start having curiosity about it? Yeah, right. Right, like here. Here I am, and I have this whole world of words, and and then I can feel the limitations of the words. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's limitations in the words, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes there are moments in which we communicate things mm -hmm. in spite of the words. <laughs> right? right. We right. have words that we're trying to communicate, but somehow a different message is coming across. Yeah, that reminds me of my deep dive into body language and how, well, I think it's like something like 15% of what we say is relayed through the actual denotation or definition of the words. Yeah. And then like another 25 or 30% is the tone of voice. Mm -hmm. And then the rest, the majority is body language, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's like, is there's that song of like, smiling faces tell lies, right? Because you, you can have a fake mm -hmm. face, mm -hmm. but the energy might be off or whatever, you know? Right, right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so a lot of my own, the information I have about what is underneath or inside or in the body language comes from my need to be in touch with my emotions. Mm -hmm. So when I was, I, I set in my life, I set a goal that I wanted to be a healer. Mm -hmm. And all the while, I, you know, I was looking for things that interested me. And at a certain point, I had all of this theory, all of these words that seemed to solve all of the problems. Like the words themselves seemed to I could explain the purpose for different emotions. I could explain all mm. kinds of things, like mm. the relationship between, like, what's a belief? And what, what are all these th different things? And so I had all of this information. Mm -hmm. And yet I was incredibly depressed. <laughs> and talking about things mm -hmm. was not helping me. Mm -hmm. Literally, going to somebody to try to talk it through wasn't doing it for me. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was that there was like this connection between what's beyond words and also what's the world of feelings right. that, that can hide. Right. All the feelings. And that way, yes, the thoughts that can hide behind the words. Right? Mm -hmm. In the... And, and all of the nonverbal, and and so to begin to explore this question of you know how do we get in touch with the nonverbal? Mm -hmm. A lot of it has to do with being able to start to identify sensation, mm -hmm. to differentiate different kinds of sensation. Mm -hmm. That's that's a big part of it for me, and sensation can be from sensing when there's tightness. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. in different areas, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If I'm experiencing a kind of tightness in my throat as I'm speaking, or if I'm experiencing this kind of tightness in my chest, whatever, whatever it is, these different kinds of experiences denote certain kinds of emotional experiences. Right. Right. And I may, and so specifically, when I am dissociated from, like when my narrative of thinking is disconnected from my feelings, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or disconnected from a significant neighborhood mm -hmm. of, my, of my consciousness, mm -hmm. meaning that you and I right now are talking about, um, let's say that we get into a, a conversation that starts talking about intimate relationship or something mm -hmm. like that. Say that I have in my past, I have hurt, a dis dissociated hurt, mm -hmm. in, in somewhere in that neighborhood of intimate relationship. We start talking about it, and if I'm not willing to be in touch with that, mm -hmm. that's still a neighborhood of me. That's still a neighborhood, neighborhood of me that, that has experience, that is, has energy mm -hmm. about whatever it is that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I will be able to, to talk to you so much, but I will be like cursing, cursing, or just kind of like gliding over the experience, the experience that's underneath, mm -hmm. which is, you know, whatever shadow material that's there. Mm -hmm. 